Welcome to Adeshi, the Bulletproof Entrepreneur Podcast, Episode 9. If you're ready to take your destiny into your own hands, you've come to the right place. This is Ordeshi, the Bulletproof Entrepreneur, featuring interviews with the most exciting and amazing entrepreneurs across Africa. Here's your host, Chi Odogu. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in once again. We're currently winding down our launch giveaway. As I stated in the past couple of episodes, we're giving out two books. The Obstacle is the Way, The Timeless Art of Turning Trials into Triumph by Ryan Holiday and Choose Yourself. We only have about a week and a half left until the giveaway is officially closed for the launch of the show. So you still have the opportunity to get a copy by leaving your comments and reviews on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, YouTube, and you can also leave your comments on our website, odeshi.com. That's O-D-E-S-H-I.com. So now let's take a minute to thank our sponsors before we get on with the rest of the show. If you're looking for a new job or you're thinking about changing careers, then look no further than Njoku.com. Njoku.com is a job search aggregator that scans all the recent job postings across Africa and delivers the closest job to your location neatly in an email bundle. So, if you're thinking of changing careers or trying your hands at something new, then go to njoku.com. That's N-J-O-R-K-U.com. Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to the show. Today's guest is Christian Ngan. He's the founder of Madeline Cazales, a cosmetic and beauty line based out of Cameroon. Prior to founding his company, Christian lived in Paris for close to 11 years where he was a student as well as an investment backer and a private equity expert. Christian was also ranked by Forbes magazine as one of the top 30 most promising young entrepreneurs in Africa. Christian, welcome to the show. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Christian Gan, CEO of, uh, and founder of Madin Casalis. Um, I... Um, I uh, I'm from Cameroon. Um, I live uh, in Cameroon um, for for 20 years. Then I I went studying uh, in uh, in France. I started uh, studying economics, then uh, 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 management and corporate finance. I have a master's degree in international affairs and a master's degree in uh, financial engineering. Um, after uh, after my master's degree, I started uh, working for an investment fund, uh, Kilvest uh, Private Equity, and then I uh, I worked for um, an investment a small investment bank boutique, uh, which name uh, is uh, Findercode. I was um, uh, I was used to to work on uh, mergers and acquisitions. Assignments uh, in uh, numerous sectors such as uh, telecommunication, uh, consumer goods, uh, civil engineering, uh, uh, in energy, for example. One day uh, in 2012, I decided to to quit, and uh, I came back uh, to Cameroon to launch uh, uh, a cosmetic company. I started uh, Madin Casalis. Uh, which is um, uh, an organic, a natural cosmetic brand, and we we have a lot of ambition. We want to to be a leading cosmetic brand uh, in Africa, in sub-Saharan uh, Africa. Uh, we already have uh, uh, more than 40, uh, 40 retail outlets in Cameroon, in Yaoundé and Douala. And we are we have uh, 20 references. Uh, I work with 10 full-time employees, full-time and part-time em- employees, and uh, we are currently uh, trying to raise funds to accelerate our development. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Christian. So let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about your days in Paris. You said you you quit your job in 2012 to come back to Cameroon to start your company. Now, what was your thought process um, while you quit? Why did you, why did you quit to start this company? 
Um, I, I observed when I came back for holidays in 2010, I observed that uh, a lot of uh, women in Africa, especially in Cameroon, uh, were bleaching uh, their skins. And uh, uh, the, there was a bad phenomenon of, uh, of whitening skins. And uh, I think um, cosmetic is a booming sector. And I wanted to, to, to start uh, something else and give an alternative to, uh, to women. Uh, use um, I want I want I wanted them to to use um, better products, uh, natural products, and uh, and my aim was to to um, to fight against uh, whitening products. So um, I I was uh, I I also knew that Africa is booming. Uh, I had. I already had experience in uh, in uh, in France, and I I think uh, I told it was time to move and and do something for for Africa. Okay, thank you. So now, Christian, you're a finance guy and economics guy by training. How did you come about um, going into cosmetics? Did you learn chemistry on the side to make the a natural cosmetic line, or you partnered with some people to manufacture it. I learned I learned uh, chemistry, but I um, I had the chance to have a um, a mother um, pharmacist. Okay. So I your mother um, is a pharmacist, you say? Yes, okay. my mother is a pharmacist, and uh, I first partnered partnered with, with her um, to 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 do the formulas. To, to learn about dermatological problems. And uh, I also uh, met a lot of experts in the domain. And we started working on uh, developing uh, the first product, which was uh, the lotion, uh, the, the anti-spot lotion okay. uh, for, for sensitive skins. So, yes, I, I work with... Uh, uh, I, I currently work with... Uh, expert in in the domain but now uh, after two years uh, i know a lot about about the um, the industry cosmetic industry okay that's that's interesting now another thing that i noticed that is unusual is that the cosmetic industry is primarily a female dominated industry so what was your unique um edge when you went into this industry that helped you stand out from all the other competitors out there in Cameroon? Um, I know a lot of uh, women, um, cosmetics are generally used um, uh, by you, by women, mm -hmm. but co cosmetic is it's large, it's very large. Okay. When, when, when we brush our teeth, uh, we use cosmetic. Everybody brush is 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 teeth, uh, is stiff. For example, uh, we also we also use uh, a lot of people use soaps, and uh, soap is cosmetic. Yeah. Um, so uh, it concern uh, it concerns a lot of people, even men, because okay. we also produce men products, uh, men. Uh, Men lo uh, lotions for men and uh, oils from for men, for example. But uh, uh, our uh, our competitive advantage is we are we are focus we focus our products um, we focus on um, uh, on uh, uh, great great service uh, great customer uh, service. And we also have a free delivery, uh, uh, free delivery products. Uh, we, uh, we we listen to um, to our customers. Uh, all questions are answered uh, within 24 hours. Uh, we don't sell products in the street. We sell products exclusively in uh, um, in pharmacies. In um, chemist stores, in um, beauty institutes, okay. and some retail 
other retail outlets. Um, we we want to 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 create a brand, an image. A lot of uh, industry uh, right there uh, are are using um, uh, mass media uh, communication. They 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 want to to sell uh, a lot, not all. Uh, a lot of local uh, industrial industrial uh, sell. Uh, skin bleaching products to a lot of people and they don't communicate on the danger of skin bleaching. We do a lot of things around uh, uh, to prevent young women to uh, stop uh, using these products. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. So you started your company two years ago. What were some of the challenges that you faced? Setting up because you're moving from Paris, France, back to Cameroon. So, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced setting up your company? Um, I have to admit that the biggest, in general, the biggest challenge is uh, is starting. It's uh, it's uh, having the courage to start to le- to to live everything uh, in, uh, in Europe and go back to Africa. I think it's the most difficult part. It's the most difficult part. The other part, I think it's less difficult. But uh, uh, when you are in, uh, in Cameroon, uh, we, we, we have to face um, negativity because a lot of people don't have the sense of entrepreneurship um, they, um, they are a lot of people are, are septic when you do new things. Okay. Uh, and uh, the government uh, doesn't encourage young people to create uh, to create companies. So uh, that's the first difficulty. And there is also a complex uh, because a lot of people think that uh, um, best product products. Uh, um, um, only comes from from Europe or from uh, US, etc. But we that's that's a challenge to to convince people to uh, to use local products and to show them that we can do uh, products with quality, with uh, better quality that, uh, than than. Uh, uh, products that comes from uh, abroad so uh, that's that is the the biggest challenge oh, okay so the government is not um um working with entrepreneurs to encourage them and also people are skeptical about entrepreneurship most people are trained to like go to school when you graduate school you find a good job and you work for Yes. 30, 40 years or whatever till you get your golden watch and retire. Okay, mm-hmm. so now let's take it way back before you came back um, roughly two years ago. Is this your interp- first entrepreneurial venture or were you doing something as a young boy in Cameroon in the early days before you went abroad? That's my first formal uh, 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 entrepreneurship uh, 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 um, venture. Okay. But when I when I was young, when I was in the in high school, I started a small uh, a small business which was Chris Music. I was recording um, recording uh, latest songs, latest hits on um, on, c- on CDs and burning them for your friends. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did that too in Nigeria. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> yes, on CDs and uh, and st- uh, stere- on stereo. Uh, yes, and uh, I, I I did I, I did uh, I did receive money for that when I was young, and it was my it was uh, it was I, I earned a lot of money when I was. Uh, when I was a student uh, in high school, mm. so I think uh, it was my bi- my first venture. It was uh, my first venture. 
Oh, okay, that's interesting. I did the exact same thing when I was in high school in Nigeria. <laughs> so I know exactly what you mean. I think the internet was very new then and not many people had it. Yes, uh, You could exactly. da- download from Napster and all yes. those things. Yeah, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, so that was your first venture. And so now, Chris, you... You have a very good, you know, background. You went to some of the best schools in Europe. You worked at blue chip companies. You've come back to to start your own venture, and you've been very successful at it so far. It's just two short years, but you've been rated in Forbes as one of the top um, young African entrepreneurs. But we know that with every entrepreneur's story and journey, there's always, you know, the counter to that, you know. So could you please tell us, like, a personal failure of yours on on your journey, something that has happened that you felt like giving up, you felt like, you know, you want to go b- back to your corporate job or something like that, be it right before or during the Madeleine Casales journey or just in your personal life that was the triggering point for you to say, hey, man, this failure is, I'm not going to let this hold me down. I'm going to use it and turn it into something that is positive. Uh, okay. <clears throat> um, I will be honest. Um, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't fear uh, about, I, I don't fear of failure. And uh, since the beginning, uh, uh, um, I, I hadn't the feeling to to I I just I just just want to give up. I, I I'm I'm the kind of guy uh, uh, that do things who do things again again and again. And uh, even when I was in school, uh, I had to 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 compete with other people. Uh, I had to I had a lot of examination. I had. To 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 go to AM Lyon, it was difficult, but I, I just want to pursue my dream, and uh, I, I feel failure that that doesn't make it's not a part of my plan. I, I know that we, I can fa- fail, but I know that I will do it again and again. Uh, I I had. Oh, Yes, I had difficult moments. Yeah, could you uh, give us an an example of one of those difficult moments? Yes, um, for example, um, uh, yes, it's, it's a long story. But for example, uh, I had uh, I did all my papers, uh, all my administrative papers, and I paid uh, I paid it to to the. Um, I pay all my I pay uh, all my taxes, and uh, I had someone in the um, um, tax administration that received all the money uh, uh, to to clear uh, my administrative stuffs. But uh, and I work with um, a certified uh, public accountant, and uh, six months later. Uh, my my accountant uh, died. He, he died, and uh, it was uh, my relationship uh, uh, with the the, 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 the tax uh, administration. So I I went uh, to um, uh, to 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 see where um, to. Um, uh, to see my um, to see if my papers were ready, and uh, I also uh, discovered that uh, the tax guy uh, died also. So <laughs> they so I was alone, and I had to um, I had to 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 do all the papers again and again, and that's the the administrative burden in Cameroon. No one knows about you. No one knows. Uh, uh, even if you go every day to the 
to the tax administration. Um, they, they, they will say that they don't know you. They don't know uh, your company. So I, I had to, 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 to do my papers again. That's a, a simple example of uh, what happened. Thank you for that story. So now let's let's talk a little bit further about your business, Madeline Casales. Um, it's been two years since you've been running this. You're growing in leaps and bounds. Can you tell me what are some of the frustrating things of doing business in Cameroon compared to when you were working in Paris? Um, oh. I think the the culture is is, is not that different. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, it's not that different. Uh, 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 what um, when, when when we do business in Cameroon, we have to, as I said, uh, we have to face uh, criticism. But okay. I also. What What do you mean uh, by what type of criticism? What do you mean by criticism? Criticism. Um, they don't trust local uh, local businesses. They don't trust. Uh, uh, Cameroonian don't trust their brothers. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm Cameroonian. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, but uh, they don't encourage. We 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 don't encourage ourselves uh, and we don't we, we don't encourage initiatives and uh, and I think um, in France it's a, I think it's the same thing I, I, I can't say that in US US I think it's different it's different entrepreneurship uh, US is a country of entrepreneur or entrepreneurship. Hmm. Uh, uh, we don't have the this Anglo Sax uh, Anglo Saxon uh, set of um, set of mind. So I think it's that you have to prove that you can do better than uh, European or U.S. products. Okay. Uh, and uh, we I also hear uh, heard uh, that uh, for example. Um, a pharmacist asked um, our uh, my sales representative uh, why uh, uh, we, she asked uh, that we should mention that uh, products are that uh, lotions or oils are, are product produced in uh, in uh, in Europe, for example, and uh, I said no. Because we have to be proud of what we do. We have to be proud of being Africans. Mm. And I don't know why I have to lie to our customers and say that we produce uh, it in uh, Europe. Okay. So it's a problem of mentality. Mm. We, 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 yes, we need to stop uh, the, all these complex. Okay. So people are more accepting of foreign brands, foreign related products, as opposed to a young Cameroonian guy starting his own company in in Cameroon, creating yes. jobs, creating world class yeah. products, and they still don't think it's good enough. That's um, yes, yes. yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a big challenge indeed. So how are you going about um, trying to sensitize and teach the people that your product is just as good? Yes, I participate to a lot of conferences. Okay. Uh, I try to empower, empower a lot of young people. Recently, on Saturday, I was in a forum I, with uh, other entrepreneurs, and uh, more and more young people want also to, to do things, and uh, they, they are inspired. So I... I'm glad to see that. I'm glad that some people realize that uh, uh, we we need to 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 build African brands, and uh, and uh, it's how I, I I try to to talk to 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 
to to to youth going to conferences uh talking on social media uh, about danger of skin bleaching but also about entrepreneurship and uh, initiatives in uh, africa okay that's interesting so now christian i read somewhere that you took three thousand dollars of your savings to start this business and it's two years now you're in over 40 retail outlets working with many pharmacies and you're also in several other CIMAC countries, I believe? Uh, not, not exactly. Okay, uh, so are you in other countries in the region? Uh, we are, yes, we are mainly in uh, Cameroon. We are oh, in Cameroon. Pr- primary? We often, okay, yes, okay. we often have customers abroad. Okay. Uh, but uh, our markets are not wide open yet. Okay as in West Africa, and uh, it's a big problem also in uh, Central Africa. We have to to be more open. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you mean the markets are not open? Is it that the governments do not allow free movement of goods and services across the borders? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you are faced with what? Multiple taxes and tariffs as you try to move move your products from... Take for example, Cameroon to another country. Uh, exactly. Oh wow. Exactly, and uh, yes, we, we. It's why if if we were in West Africa, uh, it will uh, have been more faster, uh, more fast. We we. For example, if I was in Accra, uh, I could have uh, uh, sold my products in Abidjan. In uh, in Lomé, in uh, you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, here, if if I want to go, for example, to Gabon, I have to <laughs> to take a visa <laughs> to go to Gabon. Oh wow! Yes. <laughs> for example, it's uh, that's a big problem here in Central Africa, and some uh, some uh, yes, yeah, some entrepreneurs are discouraged. Uh, yes, because we are, we are, we have closed markets. But con- concerning, uh, yes, concerning the the the, the three thousand um, three thousand dollars. Yes, I I, I started small. Okay. And uh, I encourage uh, uh, young people to start small because a lot of people just want the big picture mm. at the beginning. Yes, we have to start small. Even if we, I, I did, I, I studied, I work for big companies, but I have to start small and to know what customers want, feel customers, talk with them, be right there, uh, and uh, and uh, we invest, we invest all the money we earn, all the money we earn. I don't. I don't have a salary. <laughs> I don't have a salary. Um, that's uh, that's uh, all the things I do. Uh, it's for Madin Kazalis, and uh, all the things I pay, it's Madin Kazalis charges. So, so uh, we have to to start small, but uh, think big. Okay, start small, but think big. Now, Christian, some people would actually say, especially in Africa, that you know the three thousand dollars you start with is a started with was a huge sum of money. What would you advise someone that is starting with, for example, even a hundred dollars or fifty dollars? Because we're talking to kids that maybe are just graduating from college, and it might be a bit of the gifts that they get when they graduate or things like that. So, what would you advise them to do? before they even start spending any money or seeking any money to to dive deeper into the entrepreneurial venture? Um, <clears throat> first, um, uh, it depends what you want to do. Um, se- uh, sectors are different. Mm-hmm. Interests, interests are different. Okay. Uh, 
uh, a man who want to um, to sell um, things in the street want uh, an entrepreneur. Um, yes, I will start an, uh, another way. An entrepreneur is uh, um, entrepreneurship is a state of mind. Okay. It's when when someone want to create, want to develop something, and have a vision. It's not only to a way to eat. Even if some people started uh, 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 a job just to eat and became uh, a, uh, an entrepreneur, we have to. Uh, if if a people have a vision, if a people want to grow, it can it can start with um, uh, fifty fifty dollars, with one one hundred dollars. It can start with that, but you have to to be uh, um, you have to to be a good entrepreneur. Discipline is important. Okay, discipline, hard work. And passions. Um, a lot of people here are not passion. They want a lot of money, but they don't want to work. Mm -hmm. They don't want to work, and they, they will say that ah, oh, for example, yes, Christian guy, yes, he started with uh, three thousand dollars, but I don't have three thousand dollars, or he had the chance to do that, and uh, oh, I can't do the same thing. Everybody do what they can do. Um, uh, uh, if someone want to sell something in the street, for example, he just need uh, fifty do fifty dollars to start, but he have to manage uh, these fifty dollars, and these fifty dollars will 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 will, will grow. And he will earn one hundred dollars, and he will he will earn five hundred dollars, etc., etc. Okay. That's passions. That's passions, and uh, uh, I don't think everybody has its its own path. Oh, everybody okay. has its own path. Yes. Okay. Because I like that. I like that because it's like you rightly said. It's not the money you start with. Is the um, mindset. And I've been reading a lot about different entrepreneurs in the U.S. here that have started major companies, and yes. you'd be surprised what people have started with just five hundred dollars. Yes, yes, uh, money, um, money doesn't make the project. Projects yes. make the money. Exactly, exactly. So, with as little as you have, guys, I mean, you can make a huge difference. You have no idea. All you need is just the discipline the hard working ethic and the passion for what you're doing and a lot of extra hustle and whatever money yes. you have will just yeah. <laughs> yeah. it just wouldn't really matter at the at the end yes. of the day and i have a lot uh, another example sure another uh, some um i started with three thousand dollars but i could have not started if i told um I needed uh, one million dollar. <laughs> yes, uh, peop, um, I, I could have been uh, thinking that uh, I need one million dollar to start a cosmetic company. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if I had this in my mind, <laughs> I would have stayed in Paris. Okay. And uh, yes, yes. So it's not about the money. It's just the vision and uh, the, hustler, the, <laughs> the hustling side, etc. Yeah, because I've noticed that a lot of people think that it's the money that you need to mm -hmm. get started. And it's mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs I've talked to and I've read about, I've noticed one thing that the money is almost irrelevant Mm -hmm. Money is almost irrelevant. That's interesting. Okay, so I just I just want to follow up on your story a little bit. So you make your first batch of products, Christian. How did you go about selling your products to people while it was brand new? Did you have to go to um, 
beauty salons? Did you have to go to pharmacies? How did you pitch getting your product into stores? Yes. Um, <clears throat> yes. Um, when I when I came back, I didn't have a car. I didn't have a lot of money. Um, I was um, in my parents' house, and um, I take a ba- I take my bag. I was well dressed. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's important. I was well dressed. I took a bag, and I started. Uh, I, I walked in uh, in the street of Yaoundé. And I did a lot of beauty institutes first. Okay. I didn't go to to the pharmacies first because uh, they they are more uh, it's more difficult to reach them. But I walk in the street of Yaoundé and talked about my products. Talked about my products, and that's I I I, I, I succeed. I I I'm, I managed to 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 um, uh, to capitalize on my previous experience uh, as a as a financial expert because uh, uh, I have I had also skills we I had to talk I have to convince people mm. I have to. Yes, and it's it was important. It was decisive, and I encourage people to to use their skills to to succeed. Okay. So I I convinced beauty institutes. I talked with them. Of course, a lot of beauty institutes didn't want uh, our products. They were not interested because we we weren't we we weren't not uh, famous uh, we were not famous it was uh, not the better uh, the best packaging we had <laughs> Re- yes. really your three thousand dollars didn't get you like uh, l'oreal packaging no <laughs> <laughs> no it was not because two thousand dollars it's off oh it's it's nothing because uh, <laughs> We first, I first, uh, the first thing I, I did, it was to, uh, the mark is, tra- uh, is, um, uh, is registered. I registered the trademark. Okay. Martin Casalis, yes. That's the first thing I did when I was in France, in Africa. I registered the, 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 the brand. Okay. And uh, after that, we have to... To pay, uh, yeah, you have to pay uh, bottles. We have to pay for the furniture. We have to pay a lot of things. So two thousand dollars <laughs> at the beginning, it's nothing. It's nothing. And when you start, you are uh, you are not perfect. Yeah. And I encourage people to start not being, not trying to being to be perfect. Not trying to be perfect. If you want to be, you won't, you, you will never be perfect. So you have to launch the product and then day by day you have to improve it. Improve it because we, you have uh, customers, remarks, uh, we, we discuss with customers, we have a lot of people who know uh, your products and it's how you improve the quality of the product, the quality of uh, the, the, the texture, the quality of uh, the packaging, the quality, yes. So, basic, so basically you're just using the customer feedback to be your R&D and kind of like guide you as to exactly, what the people want. Exactly, oh, okay. exactly. And one day, one day, we we don't even hear the customer complain <laughs> complaining yes one day uh, at the beginning for for example for example for cream 
one customer will like, another one will, uh, will say, oh, I don't like it, oh, it, it doesn't smell good, or uh, I don't, yes. And we will improve, 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 improve the products. Improve during, during uh, a year, during six months, during a year, during two years, we improve it. Hmm. And one day, all the customers are satisfied <laughs> by hmm. this product. Wow. And you're proud <laughs> because uh, we uh, we don't have we, we, we don't hear complain. Okay. We don't. Yes. Yes. So we have to 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 go step by step, and, uh, and uh, I did that. I I I walked through the, uh, the 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 beauty institutes, and uh, some beauty institutes refused our products two years ago. Now they have and they sell our products. Oh, wow. Yes. Sounds, sounds like you went through a lot of rejection to get your products into the customer. Yes, huh? yes. It's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, especially when you are not famous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. When are, you, you, are you telling me nobody knew Christian Gunn from oh, France? Oh, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I know. No. Maybe now uh, young, young, no, me, uh, some young people know me now, but uh, at this time, I know a lot of people, and I knew a lot of people, but mm. I'm not, a, I'm not a star, a movie star, or yeah. something like that. So, you are, so you are I just do. another guy with a dream and a hustle, and yeah. you're just trying to do yes. your thing. Yes, yes, that's a, yes. That's, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Christian, let's take a minute to thank our sponsors before we continue with the rest of your fascinating story. Are you stuck in a dead-end job or looking to change careers? If that's the case, I've got great news for you at Njoka.com. Njoka.com is Africa's fastest-growing job search engine and aggregator that helps job seekers in Africa find employment opportunities in the locations nearest to them. You can browse jobs by category and location in real time. No more applying to outdated job postings or convoluted application processes. Join the millions who've used Njoka.com to start their career journey and change their lives. Go to Njoka.com. That's N-J-O-R-K-U.com. The future is only a click away. We can all do with a little extra cash. Why not just pick up your trash? Recyclers recycles your trash and gives you amazing prizes or cash for every kilogram of recycled material you deliver. So pick up those cans, plastic bottles, and bags. Call Recyclers today. Go to Recyclers.com. That's W-E-C-Y-C-L-E-R-S.com for more details. Okay, Christian. So now we're beginning to, like, wind down the show. So... Towards the end, I always ask um, entrepreneurs a couple of questions, you know, just to get their thoughts on certain things. So my first question to you, Christian, would be this. Uh, look, you've given us a lot of advice already, so maybe you might want to just dig a little bit deeper and find something that you can throw out there. So the question is this. Um, what advice would you tell yourself, you know, if you were just starting out again. So if you had to go back in time, maybe two years ago, when you were just starting out, based on your experiences today, what's, what's one of the critical advice that you'd, tell, you'd whisper to your own ear to watch out for when you're starting this your business? Um, <clears throat> um, um, I will say... Um, uh, I don't want to be arrogant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want really want to be arrogant, but I try to 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 follow this this advice, and uh, and I think I'm following this advice to start small. Okay. Start small. That's the first thing. Start step uh, small and do things step by step. We have a lot of uh, ambition for Marine Casalis, not only on cosmetics. We we also want to do all other things such as accessories, co-branding, a lot of things okay. around the 
around the brand. So we need first to start small, uh, uh, improve the quality of the products, and be be a reference in the market, in the organic industry, and then move on, go to the next level, okay. et cetera, et cetera. And when you start small, why? Because we will learn passions, a hard work, hard work, passions, because uh, it's like a, a company is like a baby. He has to, 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 to talk, he has to walk one day, he has to run one day, he has to, to go to school one day and to be a mature person, etc. So we have to do things step by step. Uh, imagine if you, you start giving alcohol <laughs> to, <laughs> to a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is not ready for alcohol, <laughs> so you have to to do things. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, do, you don't think that we we need a lot of don't think that we need a lot of money to 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 succeed at okay. the beginning. Okay. Yes, it's perseverance too. Okay. So um, let's let's pull a few things out of what you just said. Now you said you have um, big future plans for the future for Madeleine Casales, yes. um, and you've also mentioned that you know if you were in Ghana, you'd be in Lomé, Abidjan, and other places. So um, how are you going about raising money for your future expansion? Are you what creating teasers and inviting? Um, private equity firms to invest in your company? How are you going about raising money to expand your business? Um, <clears throat> Marilyn Casalis uh, al- already received uh, proposals uh, from, uh, from uh, investors. Okay. Uh, but we were, uh, we were too small and we are still too small. And uh, I, I received, uh, I, I got email from uh, uh, Indian groups. I got email from um, uh, <laughs> um, um, a head from L'Oreal. I had email uh, from uh, people from uh, the um, walking in the the, 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 the IFC, Investment Finance Corporation, the subsidiary of uh, World Bank. Yes. And um, now we, uh, we are currently uh, raising funds. I, I'm, I'm working with um, a council, um, uh, an ad, um, a, a small boutique, uh, an advisory firm to raise funds. Okay. Uh, because when you are small, we, 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 we are in a huge market and we need to invest to invest and take the market. So uh, we will, um, we already have a business plan. I, I wrote the business plan. Uh, it's about 40 to 50 pages. I wrote it uh, <laughs> only alone and uh, 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 because it's my, it was my job before yeah it was my job <laughs> to do to do that so um, we I think we will we, we, can, we could raise uh, capital but um, we can we could raise equity but we could also, uh, also raise um, debt and we are discussing with banks. We are discussing with uh, investors. I also had um, the opportunity to to uh, to be uh, to win the get in the ring uh, in Cameroon uh, investment battle competition, and I was selected. Uh, uh, we 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 are eight startup startup uh, African startups selected. 
uh, for the, the, the getting the ring Africa investment battle. Mm. So I'm a finalist in Africa, uh, and uh, I, I, I'm supposed to go to Kigali uh, next uh, this month in two weeks. I'm supposed to go there and to uh, to battle with other startups to get financing. So uh, there there are opportunities to to uh, to meet investors to to raise money to raise money. So. Uh, but we want to raise money uh, uh, we, step by step. Uh, we uh, we want to go step by step. First, um, conquer um, the Cameroonian market with uh, natural organic products and um, the Central African region, and then uh, try to go to. Um, to West Africa, uh, maybe raise money to 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 have uh, uh, maybe hubs in in West Africa, East Africa, so Southern Africa. It, it will depends on the opportunities okay. we receive. But I I, I received a, a lot of emails from customers abroad, customers from Senegal, uh, people. Uh, who are interested in our products in Senegal, in in France, in US, in South, uh, in Kenya, in Ghana? Uh, people heard about Madin Casalis, but <laughs> we need to raise money to to get to get bigger and mm. to enhance our capacities to serve more more people. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. So. Um just okay, so let's maybe pull out one or two things here. Um, so is Madeline Casales profitable right now? How are your revenues? Um, uh, I think we will be break even at the end of the year this year. Oh, so break even at the uh, end of 2014 after two yes, years, yes, 2000 uh, beginning of 2015. I think, uh, yes, we will be break even. At the beginning, you know, uh, it's a lot of uh, investments, a lot of, uh, yes. Uh, yes, cash out, a lot of, yes. <laughs> that's, that's, so. that's very interesting. That just, that just shows that there's such a huge market in Africa for whatever someone tries to do. Like in two, in, To break even in two years, you hardly hear of that for many American or European startups to completely break even in t- in two years plus yes 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 but if if we receive our funds uh, uh we will expect to be break even in uh, if we receive fund now and we invest we expect to be break even in uh, 2017 uh, yes yeah. six yes because we will invest more mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, and more uh, capital expenditure, exactly. hiring, all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so that changes the way your business plan looks. That's okay. That's great. So, um, Christian, could you tell us about some maybe books, software, tapes, or messages that have been inspirational to you in your entrepreneurial journey? Uh. Yes, the um, the books I read, for example. Yes. Oh, yes, I I read a lot of books, uh, and I I like reading new books. Um, when I see in my library, uh, uh, I have a book. No, it's a Richard Branson autobiography. Okay. I have uh, another book which is uh, uh, Le Monde Le Monde de Beauté Beauty World by uh, Mark uh, Tungate. Okay. Uh, I have Life and Life and Death uh, the Russell, Russell Simons. Okay, Russell Simons. Yes, I have 
but a lot of <laughs> a lot of books for, of uh, valuation, uh, financial engineering, of course. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, I have a book. Uh, uh, yes, um, um, François Pinot uh, uh, biography. François Pinot biography. And um, François Pinot is the entrepreneur that founded what Louis Vuitton. No, it's no. it's uh, yeah, it's the competitor of oh, okay. Ben. It's the one who has who has Puma. Um, La Fnac, uh, Gucci. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Yes, yes, but, oh, yes it's uh, the same, uh, yes, okay. same kind of entrepreneur. Yeah. There are rivals, rivals. Rivals, <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, yes, that's, well, yes, for example, and uh, yes, the, um, uh, uh, the, for, um, the, uh, the, um, uh, another great book, uh, the Forty Eight Law of Power. Oh, by um, Robert uh, Greene. Yeah. yeah, Robert Greene. Yeah, yes. that's a, that's a very good one. I have that one too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Great. And now, um, Christian, is there any last word of advice you'd like to give our listeners out there as we conclude the show? Um, if you... Um, a last word. Um, uh, if you... If you... If you have dreams... If you have a lot of dreams, and if you are frustrated, um, uh, uh, quit your job and launch your own company. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, why, why why did you say that? Because uh, when you are in a position and uh, you. Uh, you are not happy with what you are doing. Um, it will uh, you you <laughs> you will always be frustrated in your life, and and in your life you don't have to envy uh, envy people. Uh, when you can do better, so I think that everybody has to pursue its own dream, mm. uh, even if it's in in a company. Uh, even if uh, <laughs> not everybody wants want to be an entrepreneur, yeah. not everybody want to be an entrepreneur. It's uh, yes, if you have. To, uh, if you love your job, if you love your life, stay in this job, stay in this life. Mm. Don't move. If you don't like your job, or if you are not happy, you can like your job as I did. But uh, I I was looking for fulfillment. Other, uh, yes, yes. I, I wanted anything else, uh, uh, other uh, other thing. So you have to to go and pursue the dream, yeah. and you will be more happy. I don't, I don't earn uh, money. I don't, I don't have money now. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, I don't have money, but you're not, company, you're not a big man. Yes, <laughs> I don't have money, but I'm happy. I'm happy with my life. I'm very, very happy. Because I can do sport, I have more time for me. Okay. I I can uh, visit my friends. Okay. I can organize my time uh, as I want. I can uh, learn every day, every day, okay. and I can learn what I want to learn every day. So I'm happy with that. One day, <laughs> I will have to 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 
Well, to have a wife and uh, and kids, mm. <laughs> you need money <laughs> for that. But, yeah. But, uh, yes. So uh, you're not under uh, family pressure to start now and have the wife and kids. Um. No, I don't have. I I need to to stabilize yeah. all this first. Yeah. I have a girlfriend, but I have to stabilize all this before getting married. Uh, and have children, and I. That's for me. That's the. Um, that's the the root. Yeah. The root. Yes. Before uh, the uh, having a family, a big family. Yes. So, but I'm happy for the moment. I'm happy, and uh, money. Uh, money is good. Uh, we can buy a lot of things. Uh, we all love be- uh, beautiful things. Mm-hmm. We all love that, but we don't have to be slave, mo- uh, slave uh, of money, mm. uh, because I know that I know I know it. I will I, I will earn a lot of money. I know that I know that, but I'm not obsessed. With it. Yes, mm. I'm obsessed with satisfying more and more people, and then. Behind we, you, the, the 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 reward is getting money, but uh, I'm not obsessed with money. Uh, I love be- uh, beautiful things. I love beautiful cars. I love trips, travels. I I love. I I like it. I like it. Yeah. I like it. But I have to be passion, and uh, and uh, passion. But we have to live with passion. Yes. That, that, that's very great and inspiring because um, you're not the first person to have given me this type of advice because I've spoken with other entrepreneurs and I, the other day I spoke with a, a lady that left a six-figure job in the United States to go start a recycling company. And she's so much happier, healthier, enjoying what she's doing, making a difference. And you know what? There's something that you know, once you listen to that inner voice that's telling you to do something and you're doing what you're, you're meant to do in life, what you're called to do, as it were, that it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what is in your bank account. You, you will still find a way to be happy and content with what you have. It's when yes. you focus um, obsessively on, like, oh, you must have money, you must be this, you must wear the nicest um jeans or shoes or whatever buy and drive the biggest cars that you, you people tend to go into things that they ought not to get into and that leads to more problems down the road yes so yes. contentment is a very very big thing so christian we just want to say a big thank you for agreeing to do the show it's um, very early there in um, cameroon i appreciate the time you know the effort you've put into to your work and uh, growing your business, you know, the thought you've, you've, your thoughtful um, responses you've given to us in terms of your advice. We just um, wish you continued successes as you grow your business, you scale and you develop. And obviously, we'd love to talk to you maybe when you've raised, like, who knows, maybe $100 million from Goldman Sachs or somebody. And then we'll, yes. we'll, we'll come here and discuss the term sheet and. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I see your new Madeline Casales factory somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And there you have it, guys. A very inspirational conversation from a very inspirational entrepreneur. I just want to take this time to encourage everyone that if you're thinking about starting a venture or some type of enterprise in Africa somewhere, you don't need a whole lot to get started. Just like Christian said. The little investment you're willing to make to get your venture off the ground is more than enough to get it going until you're able to build up momentum. So just take the plunge, take the leap, have faith, believe in yourself, believe in the plan and the goal and the vision you set for yourself. And, of course, execute relentlessly and watch out for the success down the road. This is Chibuzo Odogu with Odeshi, the Bulletproof Entrepreneur, signing off. Don't let another minute go by without taking action to change your life. 
Visit Ordeshi.com right now for more incredible resources, and we'll see you next time on Ordeshi, the Bulletproof Entrepreneur.